Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, <clears throat> what we will do now is uh, uh, continue with the importance, uh, continue discussing the importance of local rings. So, uh, so again you know uh, just to recall uh, you start with a variety capital X and a point small x, then you have the local ring uh, of capital X at small x which contains the uh, ring of regular functions, global regular functions namely regular functions that are defined on all of capital X and uh, which in turn is contained in the function field of X okay uh, which turns out to be the quotient field of uh, the local ring as well uh, and now the, uh, see the local ring so the point is that the local rings are contain a lot of information that is the idea. So what we saw in the last lecture is how local rings capture isomorphisms. Uh, of course an isomorphism uh, induces uh, isomorphisms at the level of local rings and conversely ephomorphism induces uh, isomorphisms at the level of local rings and it is a homeomorphism then it is an isomorphism okay that is what we saw. Now what I am going to show is I am going to discuss local rings and regular functions uh, uh, I am going to say that if you take an element here namely an element which is a rational function that means if the function is regular on an open set and suppose this this element is here for every local ring then it is uh, actually uh, defined on all of x so it is a regular function on all of x. So uh, say it is very clear that if you take a regular function on all of x then a regular function is of course a rational function because after all uh, for uh, by definition a rational function is just a regular function defined on an open set and since you, if I take a global regular function is defined on all of x which is also an open set. So any regular function is always a rational function and every any regular function is going to live in every local ring namely that regular function is going to give you its germ in each local ring. So something here is going to be in each local ring and of course it is going to be here as well but something here when is it here the condition is that this if the sum if that is lives in every local ring then it is here okay so uh, so let me so let me state that so that is another important thing so to check that a function is defined everywhere uh, if you can somehow check that it belongs to every local ring uh, then uh, it is defined everywhere okay and the reason why you are able to do that is because all the local rings sit inside the quotient field all the local rings sit inside the quotient field so uh, so let me so let me write that here uh, uh, local rings and regular functions so here is so here is a theorem so 
the theorem is uh, uh, let x be a variety uh, an element of k x that is in the sub ring O x x for all for all small x in capital X is actually in O x. So, uh, so this is the theorem. It says that you take an element here, namely a rational function. If it is in every local ring, then it has to be a global regular function okay so so for the proof uh, so what i want to tell you is that uh, see if you think of it philosophically it's 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 quite uh, you can even think that this is obvious or even tautological okay philosophically what you're saying is that you have a rational function namely a function which is defined on an open set but you're saying that it is uh, equal to the germ of a regular function at every point which means you are saying that it lives uh, uh, in a neighborhood of every point and that is the same as saying that its domain of definition that is a maximal open set where it is defined is all of x which means it is actually uh, the open set where it is defined is not just a proper open subset of x but it is actually all of x which means it is a global regular function okay. So that is the philosophy but then uh, it involves a little bit of uh, commutative algebra. Uh, and that is what I want to I want to tell you see the, the, the important thing is that you know trying to say that a rational function is defined at uh, as a regular function in a neighborhood of a point is this is the statement that you know uh, that this actually belongs to this sub ring okay. The fact that an element here belongs to a sub ring like this is another way is, is actually the commutative algebraic way of saying that. Uh, the rational function is actually defined in the neighborhood of the point small x okay that is or it can be extended to a neighborhood of the point small x okay. So, uh, so you know trying to say that the rational function is defined at every point is if you want to say it commutative algebraically how do you say it you say you say it like this you say that the element of the, the rational function uh, defines an element of k x and you you are just requiring that it is in each of these sub rings I mean if it is in one such sub ring then that is equivalent to saying that it is defined in a neighborhood of the point small x okay. So uh, the problem with a rational function is that it could be meromorphic okay namely it could have uh, a, it could basically it could be a quotient of, of regular functions and uh, it may not be defined where the denominator function is is, is vanishing and uh, therefore it need not extend to all of x but the fact that uh, uh, it extends to a point is reflected by saying that it belongs to this sub ring okay and that is the content of the of the theorem. So, um, so let me so let me do the following thing uh, so what I am what I would first like to say is uh, uh, so we will use this fact namely um, any variety is covered by affine varieties okay any variety is covered by open subsets and in fact finitely many of them each of which is isomorphic to an affine variety. So what I will do is I will go from x to you know uh, uh, I will I will first take the case when x is an affine variety okay I will first solve the theorem for the case when x is an affine variety and then I will say that therefore it also solves the case when x is a general variety because a general variety is a finite union of affine varieties okay. Uh, so uh, first assume x is an affine variety say x equal to uh, max spec uh, a uh, a of x uh, a of x 
is, mm. is equal to a say. So you know this is how you recover uh, an affine variety from its coordinate ring. If x is an affine variety you have a x it is affine coordinate ring and if you take the maximal spectrum then you get back the affine variety okay. So, uh, so in fact so you know if you want uh, x is sitting inside some affine space as an irreducible closed subset and a x is the uh, coordinate ring of x okay it is the uh, it is the regular functions on the affine space namely polynomial ring in as many variables as the dimension of affine space modulo the ideal of the closed subset irreducible closed subset which is the prime ideal okay. So a is an integral domain which is a finitely generated k algebra right and uh, now uh, what happens is that you have uh, so you have you have a situation like this you have a x which is equal to o x that is a for us okay because if x is affine a x is the same as o x and that is a and that is sitting inside uh, well uh, o x x local ring okay and mind you this local ring uh, uh, well I will rather write I will write it here okay and this is sitting inside k x this is the function field right and how does all this translate well uh, o x is a x which is a and then the local ring is a m okay where m is the maximal ideal of a that corresponds to small x. So after all small x is an element in capital X which is uh, which can be thought of as a maximal ideal in a x okay which is a. So this is just uh, a m okay this is the expression for the local ring at a point on an affine variety where the point corresponds to this maximal ideal m okay and what about the quotient field this will be uh, the you I will get q of a you have the quotient field of a and that will be the the same as the quotient field of x the, the function field of x okay. So this and mind you q a is the same as q a m uh, if you have a uh, if you have an integral domain then uh, the integral domain uh, every localization of the integral domain is also an integral domain and the integral to domain sit in sits inside as a sub ring in its localizations and all the localizations have along and the integral domain itself they all have one and the same quotient field okay. So uh, uh, this is a is an integral domain a m is localization at the maximal ideal m which means that you invert everything outside the maximal ideal and both a and a m have the same quotient field okay q uh, q of a okay and that I that identifies with the function field of x okay and um, now what is what is happening is that I have a uh, so what is given to me is a rational function which uh, so this is a little bit of uh, simple competitive algebra but the point I want to make is that uh, uh, that whatever competitive algebra little simple competitive algebra that we are doing uh, uh, is beautiful enough to give us this result alright. So you start with you st so you start with the rational function here I mean you start with the rational function here by definition it is here so it is of the form f by g okay so I start with an f by g here okay I start with an f by g here because it is see because this rational function is an element here and this is identified with this I am easily able to write it as f by g because it is the quotient field of a where f and g belong to a and what is given to me is that this f by g belongs to a m for every maximal ideal m that is what is given to me okay. So f by g is equal to well an element here okay and an element here well let me write this as f sub m by g sub m uh, in a m uh, for every m maximal ideal so max spec is the set of all maximal ideals of a and for every maximal ideal I have this local ring and this f by g belongs to the local ring means the f by g is equal to an element in the local ring alright and an element in the local ring 
is written is written like this where the denominator is not in the maximal ideal okay okay this is given to me what I will have to you know what I will have to do I will have to show that this f by g is actually in a okay I have to show that this rational function I started with is actually here okay so I have to show that f by g belongs to a which means I will have to show that you know I have to actually show that g uh, I have to show that g divides f okay I have to show I have to sh if I show that g divides f okay then I am just that is the same as saying f by g is an element of a and that will show that f by g belongs to a so I will have to show that g divides f alright. So, uh, we we need we need to show f by g belongs to a that is that well g divides f in a or in other words you just have to show that f belongs to the ideal generated by g this is what you will have to show if you f is a multiple of g so f by g is an element of a okay that is what you will have to show. Now you see uh, now let us now let us analyze this of course you know uh, if 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 g is a unit there is nothing to prove if g is a unit there is nothing to prove because then f by g is f by a unit okay and f by a unit is also an element of a okay. So, assume that g is not a unit so assume g is not a unit since g is not a unit it means that uh, you know every non unit is contained in a maximal ideal okay. So, uh, so there exists there exists maximal ideals m uh, which which contain g okay there exists maximal ideals m which contain g and uh, so you know for such a maximal ideals m you look at this equation. So, what you will get is you will get f g m is equal to g f m for such m implies what does this imply so you see uh, g is uh, in the maximal ideal m okay and uh, therefore this right hand side is in the maximal ideal m therefore the left hand side is in the maximal ideal m but a maximal ideal is prime and therefore one of them has to be in m but gm is not in m therefore f has to be in m okay so so this this will tell you that well uh, f will have to be in m for every uh, m uh, maximal which which contains g you have this okay and um, anyway but what is very very important is this condition even if I take an m which may or may not contain g okay uh, uh, perhaps this this is just an observation that comes from this equation but what is more important is this condition that for every maximal ideal I am getting an element outside that maximal ideal and the and the beautiful thing about that is that you know uh, uh, whenever you give me one element out of each maximal ideal then this collection of elements actually uh, 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 generates the unit ideal okay that is a that is a crucial topological fact it is the same as saying that uh, 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 all the basic open sets defined by all these gms they cover uh, the whole uh, space okay see uh, now so let let us not worry about this observation for the moment okay uh, let us look at this see uh, you take gm 
does not uh, for every for every m in max spec a uh, which is actually x there exists uh, gm which is not in m that is what you have here all right and now the claim is the set of all you take all these gms where m belongs to uh, m is a maximal ideal of a the ideal generated by this is actually a itself it is the unit ideal okay and uh, and the the answer is I mean why this is true is very very simple because you see if you take the ideal generated by all these gms the ideal generated by the gms if it is not a if it is not the unit ideal then it is a proper ideal right uh, some an ideal which is not the unit ideal is a proper ideal and you know any proper ideal is always contained in a maximal ideal therefore this ideal will then be contained in an m naught okay but then g m naught will be in this ideal which is contained in m naught but by definition g m naught is not supposed to contain to m is not supposed to contain uh, be contained in m naught and that is a contradiction okay so let me repeat it if this is not a then this is contained in an m naught where m naught is a maximal ideal okay and then the problem is that g m naught is in this collection and that will be contained in this which is contained in m naught but g m naught is not supposed to contain be contained in m naught you get a contradiction therefore this ideal generated by all these gms is a okay this is this is this is just equivalent to so let me also write say that this is equivalent to to x is given by the union of all the d gms where m belong to max spec a because what you should understand is you see you see if gm is not if gm is not in m okay you look at dgm what is dgm dgm is the basic of a fine open set where the function gm does not vanish okay so it is the same as saying that the point corresponding to m is in the basic open set defined by gm okay so but i have covered all the points i have taken all the maximal ideal so i have covered all the points and for each point i have this dgm so you know if you draw a picture this condition is actually like this i mean it's a bad picture which is which is very uh, only said theoretically descriptive but it is not a uh, uh, correct picture but it is correct enough to uh, uh, think a little so you have to to, to give you some uh, uh, basic idea of how things are so you have x given any point m okay you are thinking of uh, a maximal ideal in a as a point of x okay and for this every point you are able to find this dgm which is an open subset which contains that point all right that is what it means to say that gm is not in m that's what it geometrically means and since you have covered every such point the union of all these dgms will be x okay but then you know uh, zariski topology is quasi compact therefore only finitely many gms have to cover x but the fact that finitely many gms cover x is the same as saying that those finitely many gms will generate the unit ideal okay so uh, uh, which which is if and only if x is equal to union of uh, i is equal to 1 to l d g m i so here i will have those g it is ideal generated by d g m 1 etc up to d uh, i mean up to g g m sub l so if something is a un if something is a unit ideal then one can be generated by finitely many gms call those gms as gm1 through gml then the ideal generated by gm1 through gml contains one so it is the full ideal a but then writing a is equal to the ideal generated by gm1 through gml is topologically equivalent to writing max spec of a which is x is union of all the affine opens defined by these gmis that is what is the topology that is involved okay so you can see 
uh, side by side uh, uh, algebra uh, and topology going hand in hand for the Zariski topology. Now, now if you look at it carefully uh, what you get is well therefore what you get is uh, therefore uh, uh, there exists f m i uh, so let me use something h m i uh, in A such that uh, sigma h m i uh, g m i is equal to 1 a equal to 1 to L. this is what it means to say that the g m i's uh, generate 1 okay that means a uh, ring linear combination of the g and g m i's is equal to 1 for a suitable ring linear combination okay. Now you know but then you see now I can use this I can I can now use now I can take f by g uh, is equal to f by g times 1 where you know I am doing all this computation here in the quotient field okay I am whatever equations I am writing now are valid in the quotient field. So f by g is f by g times 1 and the 1 the the 1 in the A is the same as the 1 in the AM it is the same as the 1 in the quotient field okay. So uh, this makes sense also in the quotient field so it is f by g sigma i is equal to 1 to L h m i g m i because after all this is 1 now I push it inside I will get sigma i is equal to 1 to L uh, f by g times h m i g sub m i. But you see uh, I have uh, uh, f g m i is g f m i alright. So, uh, so this is going to be sigma so you know if I, I, I can write the sigma i equal to 1 to L f g m i h m i by g but that is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to L f g m i is actually g f m i by g and well g cancels out and what you get is I get sigma i equal to 1 to L f m i h m i which is actually in A this is an element of A okay. So what I have done is I started with f by g in k x and I proved it is actually in A x so it is so it is actually a regular function okay. So, uh, so, so, so this settles the case when x is affine okay. Now when f x is not affine you know that x can be covered by finitely many open sets each of which is affine and what this argument will tell you is that uh, on each of those affines uh, the rational function will be a regular function okay and what will tell you is that the regular function lives on uh, all open sets of a cover okay and it coincides and it will of course coincide on the intersections therefore it will give, an, give a global regular function okay so uh, so that finishes the proof in the general case okay so let me write that down this this settles the case when x is affine okay uh, when x is general x is uh, a finite union of open subsets open affine subsets okay if x is uh, if x is a general variety then we have seen that any general variety is a finite union of open affine, affine subsets and what we by what we just proved the rational function okay uh, the rational functions will not change uh, whether you consider rational functions of x or rational functions of, of, of any open subsets okay therefore what you will get is that the rational function you started with actually is a regular function on each affine open set which form uh, which all of which form a cover for x and of course on the intersections also it will be it will it will give the same function 
because all everything is uh, finally happening in the quotient field which is the same ok. So, basically what will happen is that you will get a regular function on each uh, affine open subset by the previous argument and all these regular functions will coincide on the intersection and therefore they will define a global regular function after all a global regular function is a global function which is locally regular ok. So, to define a regular function you have to just define it on an, uh, on an open cover ok. So, uh, so the case when x is general is also uh, covered ok and So, that is the general case ok. You know if you want uh, maybe I can even write something in symbols so that you are a little bit more con convinced comfortably. So, so you know x is union i say j equal to 1 to m x i where each x i inside x is open affine which means that each x i is an affine variety uh, each x i is an open subset of x which is isomorphic to an affine variety and then you must understand that you know k x is the same as k x i for every i ok and O capital X small x is the same as O capital X small x i uh, O capital small x uh, capital X i comma small x if if small x is in x i the the you know the uh, the uh, local rings and the function fields do not change if you go to open sets ok. So, what will happen is that if you start with an element of kx it will belong to and it can be thought of as an element of kxi for each i but because each xi is affine and it is in each local ring by the previous argument it will be in oxi for every i. So, you will have an element of kx which is in oxi for every i but then uh, that will mean that it is in actually in ox ok. So, uh, and uh, a phi in k x is equal to k x i belongs belongs to O x i for every i by the affine case above. and thus to O x and that is the that is the end of the proof ok. So, you, uh, after all uh, you know to define a function you have to def only uh, you only define it on an op you have to define functions on open sets which agree on the intersections ok and similarly to define a uh, regular function you have to give me a regular function on an open cover which agree on the intersections and that is what happens here ok. So, this is a very nice fact that to conclude that a rational function is actually a global regular function that it is defined everywhere you just have to check that it belongs to every local ring ok. So, that is another that demonstrates another important uh, power uh, 
of the local ring okay. Then the next thing I wanted to tell you about is something that is far more uh, profound it is the following thing uh, see the uh, you can see that uh, somehow the very word local ring will tempt you to think that it it somehow encodes all the local information at the point but the problem is local information if you want to think of it is a information on an open set containing the point uh, you must remember the open sets are huge for the Zariski topology because the open sets are after all every open set is irreducible and dense okay therefore if you take an open neighborhood of a point it is not a small neighborhood it is not small in the sense of usual topology it is not like having a smaller and smaller disc or smaller and smaller interval of a point on a real on the real line or having a smaller and smaller disc of epsilon radius of a point on the plane it is not like that every open set is huge therefore the fact that the local ring uh, stores such information should tell you that it is actually having much more than local information so the truth is that the answer to that is yes it actually also stores information on a huge subset containing the point so that is the power of the local ring so what I am going to next state is this very beautiful result it says that take two varieties x and y okay and take a point of uh, one variety take a point of the other variety take a local ring at this point for this variety and take a local ring at that point for the other variety if just these local rings are isomorphic okay then there is a whole open subset containing this point in this variety and an open subset containing that point in the other variety which are isomorphic so if if two local rings are isomorphic if the local ring of a variety at one point just the local ring alone is isomorphic as a k algebra to the local ring of another variety at some other point then a huge open neighborhood of this point on this variety has to be completely isomorphic to a huge open neighborhood of the other point so even isomorphism of local rings is actually in this sense pretty global okay it tells you that if two varieties have two points which are uh, whose local rings are isomorphic it means that these two varieties are on an open set on open sets they are actually isomorphic that means the only place where they are not isomorphic is a is a boundary okay so that is another uh, powerful property of the local ring so let me state that so local rings so I will call this local rings and uh, by rationality so local rings and by rationality okay so let, so let me define this notion of by rationality by rationality uh, you two varieties are called by rational if there is a non empty open subset of of each which are isomorphic okay so uh, x varieties x and y are called by rational if that exists u open in x of course non empty and <coughs> v open in y uh, of course again non empty such that such that we have an isomorphism of varieties u to v So two varieties are are birational if there is an open subset of one which is isomorphic to an open subset of the other. See the varieties themselves need not be isomorphic, but the point is there is a huge open set of this of of each of these which are which look the same. Okay, that is the concept of birationality. Now what you must understand is that this actually this notion of birationality is 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 it's actually an equivalence because you know if X is uh, if x and y are birational that is of course the symmetric okay x is birational to y is the same as y is birational to x and of course an isomorphism is always uh, 
uh, if two varieties are isomorphic they are of course birational because you can choose the open sets to be the whole varieties themselves. So uh, the notion of birationality actually it is a relation which is an equivalence relation if x is birational to y then y is birational to x any variety x is always birational to itself by the identity map which is an isomorphism okay and if x is birational to y and y is birational to z then x is birational to z okay because any two open sets will always intersect okay. So if you, an iso if you have an isomorphism uh, if u inside x is uh, isomorphic to v inside y and v prime inside y is isomorphic to w inside z then you can get the isomorphism composed in on v intersection v prime which will be non empty okay therefore this birationality of varieties is an equivalence relation okay and uh, uh, if you go if you take the set of all varieties if you take the category of all varieties and then you go modulo this equivalence you get what is called the set of birational equivalence classes of varieties and actually uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the first step in classification of varieties is to find in each birational equivalence class a variety with say good properties for example uh, a variety which is smooth okay and uh, so uh, you know basically whenever we study objects in mathematics we always ask the question uh, how many non isomorphic objects are there okay so or in other words you try to <coughs> describe the set of isomorphism classes of objects okay this is called the classification problem. So you can ask the classification question for varieties you can ask you, you take all varieties and you go modulo isomorphism then you get the set of isomorphism classes of varieties what is that set okay. Now the, the fact is that that is not a very easy question okay and in fact uh, the first answer is to instead of going modulo isomorphism which is very strong you try to first go modulo weaker equivalence relation like birationality. So you first ask the question uh, uh, what is the set of uh, birational equivalence classes of varieties okay that brings down the problem to a more uh, uh, tackleable level okay. So, so birationality is very important in the classification of varieties. Uh, so let me write this down uh, birationality it is easy for you to check that uh, is an equivalence relation okay. and uh, now comes the theorem that uh, I wanted to state the theorem is uh, let x belong to x small x be a point in capital X small y be a point in capital Y such that of course x and y are varieties uh, OXX the local ring of capital X at small x is isomorphic to uh, OYY uh, isomorphism as K algebra. So I just have two varieties capital X and capital Y and points small x belonging to capital X small y belonging to capital Y such that the local ring of capital X at small x is isomorphic to the local ring of capital Y at small y by an isomorphism which is a K algebra isomorphism okay. Then the result is that there is an open set U in X in capital X which contains the point small x there is, there is an open set capital V of Y which contains the point small y and there is an isomorphism of varieties from u to v which under pull back of regular functions at the local rings induces phi okay. So then there exists u in x open uh, v in y open x belonging to u y belonging to v and an isomorphism of varieties uh, uh, so let me use uh, 
so so let me use a different symbol for this so let me call this something uh, let me call this a psi uh, phi from uh, u to v such that phi hash uh, y is actually psi uh well sign okay so it's a it's a very very powerful theorem what it says is that if one local ring of one variety is isomorphic to another loc local ring of another variety then these two varieties are birational they are the same on huge open sets they are the same okay and that tells you how much information the local ring contains just isomorphism we think of local ring as something that is concentrating attention at a point but this tells you it is much more than that just local ring at one point of one variety being isomorphic to local ring at another point of another variety is enough to say that these two varieties are the same on a huge open set except for a boundary they are isomorphic ok. So that is the fact uh, that gives you that the, the fact that local ring contains lot of information uh, even glo more or less uh, global information uh, as uh, in the sense that it contains information on contains information on a big open set ok. So, uh, so one needs to prove this and again uh, the, the beautiful fact is that uh, this also involves uh, uh, a lot of commutative algebra but pretty easy commutative algebra involving localizations and it is very uh, uh, it is the proof is not very difficult but the point is that you uh, can just use uh, nice commutative algebra to capture these two open sets as nice basic open sets ok which are isomorphic basic open sets uh, containing those two points which are which are isomorphic ok. So, uh, so let us do that in the next lecture.